1981 in Japan was a weirdly impactful year for me. I, I wasn't even alive yet, but in that year, in a city called Nagoya, this guy Hideo Kodama had just invented 3D printing. You know, the entire industry my team and I have been building in for three years. And a few hundred kilometers away in Tokyo, Honda had just released the Honda City, and more importantly to me, the Moto Compo, which was a tiny motorcycle that folded up and fit in its trunk as an accessory. By the time I had discovered the Moto Compo, I had already missed out on it. Prices were through the roof. And I knew that Honda was coming out with something that was going to be its successor. And when the Moto Compacto came out in the last year, I was so excited and then incredibly disappointed that it was nothing like the original. You know, the original Moto Compo was like a mini motorcycle that had suspension and an engine and like I could commute to work on, where the new one was just like a plastic suitcase that I think would barely make it up the hill from my house. As Honda was launching the new Moto Compacto, I had just gotten test results back of our HS Pro printing our nylon composites and the numbers were crazy. We were seeing over 150 MPA on the XY strength and over 70 on the Z, like numbers I had never seen before in my life in FDM. And I realized at that moment that I didn't have to settle for what Honda did. I could make my own spiritual successor to the Moto Compo and I could 3D print the entire thing because the materials were finally there. And you guys have already seen a bit of it. You know, we brought it to some trade shows, we've taken it racing in the parking lot, and it's an amazing feeling getting to test and experience your own products like that. Like, I can stare at data sheets and laboratory test results all day, but there's nothing like building something and trusting your own life on it. Like having printed handlebars between your hands and going off a jump on the side of a mountain on it is something that I never thought we'd get to so quickly. And in the spirit of that real world testing, we obviously pushed it a little bit too far a few times. <laughs> After we got back from the park, Compo was looking real beat up. Like the headlight and the handlebars were dangling by some cables. And I was about to hit reprint on the parts when I realized that if I was going to ride it like a dirt bike, I might as well just redesign it as a dirt bike. So I booted up CAD and I was like, okay, this is pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna extend all the suspension so I have some more travel and give myself more clearance so I can fit big chonky tires. After I finished the CAD, I brought all the parts into Pantheon Slicer and I was honestly a bit worried because the forks had gotten like six inches longer. And this was a really critical part to print in one piece because of how much stress it was exposed to during riding. And our bed on the new HS Pro is like 400 by 400. And I didn't realize that that meant the corner was over 560 in length. So they fit perfectly. And even better, like all of these new parts across our fleet printed just like overnight. So I only had to wait like 12 hours to be able to assemble them. Okay, so all the parts ran last night and I'm just pulling them off the bed right now. And like all the parts look great, but I'm always nervous that like I mess something up in CAD and now nothing's gonna fit. It's like the most disappointing feeling ever when you're excited to build something. And then it's like, nope, you type out a zero as a one and now you don't get to build. So first step with printed parts or like parts in general when you get them back from manufacturing is checking everything over and doing a bit of post-processing. On these parts, I had to ream a couple of the precision bores, and then it was just a bunch of support removal. Support removal used to be something I just dreaded with 3D printing parts, but with the new HS Pro materials and profiles, they come off really beautifully. Like my new secret technique is just like hit it with a hammer and they just like disintegrate off without even leaving a scuff on the part, which is super cool. After supports, it's this one thing that I've been cursed with for the last six months. I cannot design a wheel without forgetting the valve stem hole. I don't know why it slips my mind every single time. But here I am back here with like a drill and reamer on brand new parts. But luckily our layer bonding has been so good that you can just drill through the side of parts without having to worry about it, which in a sense is a cool flex. Once all of that was done, it was really just a whole bunch of bearings. Like, I think there's like 30 bearings in this build because I am bad at designing things and this is stupid, but the bearings push into the bores just perfectly. 
I think I just chat GPT'd bearing bores and like typed in the numbers that it told me and everything just presses in like I would kind of imagine. Like the wheel bearing here felt exactly like tapping a wheel bearing into my motorcycle wheel, which was super cool to experience like that level of tolerancing in a printed part. I think the part that brought me the most joy in building it was installing my off-road body work. You know, I really wanted to make sure that if we built a dirt bike, it would look like a dirt bike. And seeing it come together for the first time was so magical. Like I couldn't wait to get it outside to rip. And I think that's what we do within the next five minutes. Oh. <laughs> it's so smooth. I'm going for the little off-road section. Okay, I'm gonna follow you. So after that quick parking lot test, we were feeling so confident with what this bike could do. Like I had never trusted 3D printed parts more in my life than what's come off our new HS Pro into this enduro combo that we had built. And we were ready to just go see what it could do up on the mountains riding some real trails. When we got to the bottom of the trail, we were so excited with how well our 3D printed parts held up. We took some of the biggest hits on that trail, the jumps and drops and chunky root sections, and all of those impacts were just unfazed by the printed parts. Now, we did break one of the bikes, and the irony is the thing that failed was the motor controller, one of the few parts that wasn't printed. But we still had a lot of energy left, and I think we had the mentality that we weren't coming home until at least both bikes and both people were broken. So we figured, why not go hit some big jumps now? I'm good. So we just got back from the North Shore and both the bikes and the riders are pretty beat up. So the bike that I rode, the only thing that actually broke on it was the peg bar. And this happened when I crashed the last dirt jump and it flipped over itself onto essentially concrete. Not a big deal. It's a three hour print and I'll have it back on the road before the end of the night. Now, Logan's bike, on the other hand, this was the motorcycle that had a malfunctioning motor controller that ended its day a bit early, which turned out to be a bit of a blessing in disguise because we had cracked the head tube at some point. I think it was the first drop at bobsled. I'm not really sure. And this is bad because the next thing that happens after this is the front wheel no longer being attached to the rest of the bike. And I honestly panicked a bit being like, oh no, like what happened wrong with the print? But we pried this open a bit and we realized that this only has six walls and 20% infill. I think this might've been the test fit frame that was never meant to ever be ridden. And I was an idiot and somehow got this mixed up in with all the production parts. So this frame, which is now mostly air, 
I realized in hindsight, I actually made it through all of our road testing, the parking lot practice, the skate park day. It made it all across the continental US and it literally took a three foot drop onto flat before it failed, which actually makes me feel quite a lot better about just how strong the HS Pro parts are because like it's Swiss cheese. It was never meant for any of this and it still took a huge impact before it let go. Now, with all that said, there is one more test I want to run before we pack up the two bikes for the night. A key thing the Moto Compo was supposed to do was fit in the trunk of a small hatchback. Now, I don't have a Honda City today, but I've got a Fiat 500, which is about the same size. And unfortunately, in the pursuit of making a bike that was capable of making it down a mountain, it failed at the one thing it's supposed to do, which is fit in the back of a small hatchback. Yeah, is this thing oh, on? Oh man, I think it's recording. All right, welcome to a Sacrifices for Sales with Bob. He's gonna hit this jump behind me and if he lands, you gotta go buy a printer. Dude, let's send it. Oh yeah, that's gonna be it. Oh, oh that was massive!